Hey guys, welcome to your first Godot tutorial. In this tutorial, I'm going to be showing you how to get up and running real quick and have a basic game that you can play around with. So one quick note about this tutorial is we're going to be using C Sharp for the scripting. Now there are a few other Godot tutorials that I've seen, but all of them have used GD script for their scripting. There are many reasons why I think C Sharp should be your preferred scripting language for Godot. The main ones being that one, C Sharp is used everywhere. GD script is just used for Godot. So you want to practice a language that has, uh, you know, that is used in other places besides just Godot. Second reason is because when you're using C Sharp, you can use any, uh, when you're using C Sharp, you can use any .NET library uh, as part of your game. So you can use any data science libraries or um, any uh, machine learning libraries or anything else that is a .NET library, you can use it in your game. So you get an entire ecosystem of things by using C Sharp. All right, so you can ignore all of this text, but basically I'll show you how to download and install Godot and then how to create a little basic game where you're gonna move a little guy around and that's it. So to download and install Godot, go ahead and open up a web browser, just type in Godot Go to the first link, it's going to be godotengine.org and scroll down a little bit, you'll see a download button, click that and make sure that you get the mono version, not this standard version up here because that's the only version that allows C Sharp uh, for scripting. And also get the 64-bit version unless you know that you only have a 32-bit operating system. Most likely, if you don't know this, you probably have a 64-bit operating system get the 64 bit. So when you click that, you're gonna get a folder, unzip that folder, and then inside it, you're gonna see godot.exe. So I will show you mine. I put my folder in C, godot, once I unzipped it, and you're gonna see godot.exe. So you're just gonna to need to launch that executable. On Linux, it's not gonna have that .exe extension, but everything else is the same. That's the executable that you need to launch. So I like to just right click it and pin to start. And I launch it from my start menu right here. Okay, so to create a basic game, first go ahead and create a folder. I'll place it on the desktop. I'll call it tutorial one, but you can call yours whatever. And launch Godot. Okay, quick note, um, I'm not going to be explaining things too much uh, because I want to get up and running, I want to get you up and running quickly so you can see how fast it is to, uh, how fast and easy it is to make stuff with Godot. Um, but I will be explaining everything that I'm doing here in uh, future tutorials. So don't worry, I'm not going to skip past all of these in future tutorials. We'll go into much more depth. Anyways, click this new project button, choose a name for your project. And here you just want to choose that folder that you created. So mine is on my desktop and it's called tutorial one. You have two choices of renderers. Just choose 3.0, it's newer. And that launches the editor. There's a 3D scene editor and a 2D scene editor. For now, we're going to be creating a 2D game. So choose 2D and then Here's your scene and you place in your scene a bunch of nodes. So let's go ahead and add a node. Click this little plus button. There's a whole bunch of nodes that you can add. Each one has their own advantages and disadvantages, their own purpose. In future tutorials, we will cover all of these so that you know what to use and when to use it. For now, you will want to use a sprite. This little search button searches these, so it's kind of handy. I want the sprite node. I can either double click it or I can click create here and it added it to my scene. There's two ways that you can see stuff that has been added to your scene. One, they will show up here and two, they'll show up in the scene hierarchy over here. So the, the reason why you don't see anything here is because we haven't given the sprite any image. So the sprite node allows you to show little images on your scene and on the right, when you select a uh, node, on the right, you're going to see all of the properties of that node. One of the properties of the sprite node is a texture, 
which specifies the actual image that should be drawn onto the location of the node. So when you created your Godot project, uh, one of the files that by default you got in your folder is this PNG file. Let me show you this icon.png file. So we're just going to use that as the image for our um, guy. This file system tab also shows you the files that are in that folder. One more thing, whenever you see this res colon slash slash, that's basically the root of your project. So that means it's the this folder, essentially. Okay, so drag this icon.png right to this texture property, and voila, there there is the uh, the guy appearing. Um, now you see this little box, this purplish box. I don't know if that's purple or blue. I can't really tell colors. Maybe it's both. That little box is basically the camera, right? That's the portion of the scene that is being visualized. So if you click this play scene button, it's going to ask you to save the scene. So you must save it before you can play it. Click yes. It's going to pop up this. So we're going to save it in res, which is the root of our project folder. And I'm just going to call it sprite. This .tscn extension means it's a scene. So we're going to click save and saved and it launched it. So you see it's showing only the, the bottom right corner of our guy because that's the part that's in the view. Now you can move this around by just dragging it. We'll place it like in the center. Okay and by the way you can um, pan around your scene by holding the middle mouse button and moving around and you can zoom in and out by scroll uh, using your scroll wheel. So we're gonna put this guy right in the center play the scene again and there he is right there so that's pretty good let's now move him the way that you control nodes or the way that you add additional behavior to nodes is by attaching a script to them so make sure that your node is selected in the scene hierarchy uh, hierarchy and then click this little uh, plus but uh, this little script button which means add a new script for your language make sure that you use C sharp um, by default, it's GD script, so make sure you use C sharp. That's what we're going to be using, and then you can leave everything else uh, the same here. The path specifies where you want to place this C sharp file, so we're just going to put it into the root of our project. So, and I'm going to call it sprite.cs. As you know, the CS extension is for C sharp files. We're going to click create, and there we go. So it opens up that C Sharp file in the built-in text editor, and I don't like using that. I like using VS Code. For those of you who haven't used VS Code, I do have a tutorial on VS Code, so I'll add a link to that tutorial in the description. I love using it. It's one of my favorite tools, so I'm going to definitely be using that instead, and I'll show you how. So just go ahead and launch VS Code and then drag your project folder right on it and that will open it up so that you can edit the files in that folder. So the file that we want to edit is that newly added C sharp file, right? Let's uncomment here, delete these comments here and format the document. Okay, so there's two functions that it already generates a stub for. We'll go over these in more detail but the uh, this process function is called every frame and we'll go over what frames and all of that is in more detail later but basically this process function is called a certain number of times a second usually around 60 but that can vary depending on your hardware but just know that this function is called like a, a lot of times every second and what we want to do in this function is we want to see that if the W key is pressed we want to move our guy up if the S key is pressed, we want to move them down, and so on. So in Godot, there's a class called input, and you can use that class to uh, get any input that might be happening, like keyboard, mouse, joystick, etc. So we're going to use it to see if the W key is pressed right now. Is key pressed, and what key? That's in the key list enum, the W key. We have to cast it to an int. Okay, so if the W key is pressed, we want to move the position of our node. So this refers to the node because this script is attached to the node. 
And what we want to do is the position is a two-dimensional vector with an x and a y component that specifies the x and y position of your node. We're going to add to that a new vector. So we only want to add to the y because w should move them up. So we only want to mess with the y component. So for the x component, we're going to add 0. We're going to leave it the same. And for the y component, we're going to add a negative number. So negative sum amount. And we'll define our amount up here. We'll just do 5 pixels. And OK. So when the w key is pressed, we want to add negative 5, essentially. Why negative? Well, because the coordinate axis is like so. Origin is over here, positive uh, x-axis is to the right, positive y-axis is down. So if you want to move up, you have to add a negative number. Okay, so that takes care of moving him up, and we'll do a similar thing for moving him down. Um, and left and right. Let me format my document, and there we go. So to move him down, we're going to change this to an S. And then we want to add a positive amount. To move him left, we're going to change this to an A. And we're going to leave the Y component alone. We're going to add a negative amount to the X component. To move him right, we're going to change it to D, and again, we're going to leave the Y component alone, and we're going to add an amount to the X component, and that should be fine. I saved it. Now I'm going to go back into Godot and run play the scene. This scene. Okay, there we go. Now let's see if it works. Yep. Up, down, left, right. Okay, and that's it for the first tutorial. I just wanted to quickly get you guys up and running. Um, in the subsequent tutorials, I'll go into a lot more detail and I'll explain the main systems of Godot so that we can uh, build high quality games. Um, give me any feedback on this tutorial. So if, if there's something I did wrong, if I went too fast or if I went too slow, um, you gotta let me know, otherwise I will not adjust. Um, so thank you for watching and I hope to see you in a future tutorial. Bye-bye.